This is criminal barrister Robert Rinder. He spent his career fighting for justice. Now he's ready to rule in ITV's court. In order to tattoo someone, you need to use a needle. Yes? Yes. I did it also say it's very important when you use a tattoo gun that you don't use it on anyone whilst they're intoxicated. Yes. And how much have you had to drink? Quite a lot. I've been drinking all day. Did you hope before you arrived at the party to get a tattoo from the genius over there? Um, yes. You did? Well... No, no. I'm writing that down. Leaving aside what you wanted on your bottom, which I make no judgment about whatsoever. It wasn't just dumb. It wasn't just super dumb. It wasn't even stupid. You could have ended up dead. Becky is in court to claim £1,500 for the removal of a tattoo which she had done at a house party when both she and the tattooist were under the influence of alcohol. Defendant Max admits he began the tattoo but says he doesn't owe the full amount as he stopped and it was completed by someone else. I've got Becky here. Yep. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Max? Yeah. S? Yes. Yes. Good. Now, Becky, Max, this is quite a serious case because, uh, Becky, you ended up going to a party some time ago. Uh -huh. Let me finish what I'm saying, if you don't mind. Yes? Just assume it wasn't a question. You ended up going to a party some time ago that Max was at, yes? Yes. Max, you were at this party as well, weren't you? Yes. And there were high spirits and that sort of thing, and consumption of lots of spirits. And during the course of this party, during the high drinks and the consumption of alcohol and that sort of thing, something rather untoward happened. Is that about right, Becky? Yeah. Well, let's just go back to the beginning. How long have you known Max before you attended this party? About five years. About five years? Yeah. So, you're 20 now. Yeah. And what job are you doing at the moment, Becky? I'm currently unemployed, just now. Just now. But you've worked as a model, am I right? Well, yeah. Yes. And so you've known Max since you were 15 years old? Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. And what sort of young man is Max? Is he a decent young man? You've known him since he was 19, by the looks of things. Yeah, he was. He was? Pretty decent, yeah. Max, you own a tattoo gun, is that right? Yes. I call it a tattoo gun. What, what's it actually called? Oh, you've got it correct. Tattoo I've got gun. it correct? Yes. You know why it's called a gun, don't you? Because a gun can do... Damage. Good! <laughs> Terrible damage. Yeah. And just like an ordinary gun, it can actually cause death unless it's used carefully and seriously and soberly. Yes? Yes. You understand that? Yes. Now, Becky, you've brought a picture, I think, of the tattoo gun. Can I have a look at it, please? Now, this is, just to be clear, not your tattoo gun. Yes. It's just an example. But I'm going to ask you about it, if I may. Thank you, Michelle. It's rather like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> now, Max, are you a tattoo artist? Um, I was training to be. At the time of this incident we're going to come on to, you were training to be a tattoo artist? I was looking to start attending college, yeah. Where did you get the tattoo gun from? eBay. From an auction website? Yeah. Who was training you to use the tattoo gun? Um, I was using it myself on practice skins. Practice stencil. skins, I presume, on animal skins, not on human beings. No, it was like synth synthetic flesh. Synthetic Excuse me? Synthetic you wouldn't sort of skin. go and rob graves to go and practice. <laughs> no. So where would you get the flesh from? You'd, just, you'd buy the synthetic, synthetic skin. Synthetic stuff? Yeah, online. Did you have somebody who was training you, somebody who um, knew what they were doing, whose no. auspices you were working under? No. 
Did you get an instruction manual, an instruction video? Did, was that provided on the auction website with the gun? Yes. It was. And did that instruction manual say various things, like, in order to tattoo someone, you need to use a needle? Yes? Yes. And did it say, don't use a needle on the same person more than once, because that could transmit very serious diseases and that sort of thing? Yes. And did it also say, it's very important when you use a tattoo gun that you don't use it on anyone whilst they're intoxicated? Yes. Say it louder. Yes. And it's particularly important, not just mm. that the person who's being tattooed isn't intoxicated, but the person doing the tattooing isn't drunk either. Now, did you want to be a tattoo artist in the long term? Yes. And as far as you were concerned, you were capable of training yourself to become a tattoo artist. You didn't need anybody else to help you, anybody else's expertise. You didn't think you ought to become an apprentice first. I was, I was looking into research and to apply for colleges. Well, didn't you think you should apply to the college first and then buy and practice the equipment so they could teach you to use it safely? Yes. But you thought you'd just start and have a go on your own? Yeah. Was that the most sensible thing to do in the world? No. Becky, you went to a party. Ah. Uh, Is that a noise or a yes? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Max was at the party. How much had you had to drink before you got to the party? Um, I started drinking there. I had a few cans of beer and vodka, some vodka. So how drunk would you say you were by the time the tattoo gun Mary. made its first appearance? Slightly drunk, a little tipsy, merry, Mary. or really, I think, what's the expression, off your face? Merry, <laughs> um, yeah. Now, I presume, I may be wrong, people do all sorts of strange things. They buy tattoo guns without being trained. Yes? Yes. That's like saying, you know, I'm going to buy my knives before being trained as a knife thrower. Did you hope before you arrived at the party to get a tattoo from the genius over there? Um, yes. You did? Well... No, no, I'm writing that down. Why didn't you go to a, a tattoo parlour if you wanted a tattoo? Don't from know. somebody who was experienced, who could provide it in hygienic and safe circumstances. Because I trusted my friend. I presume, and it may be just my generous assumption, that you're not terribly stupid. No. I presume wrong. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what tattoo did you want before you got to the party? You must have had an idea of some kind of picture in your mind. Uh, I don't know really. Um, I just knew that I was. I heard that Max had the tattoo gun, and I've went up to the party. I was like, I'll have a few drinks and stuff, and mm. get a tattoo. Did you know that a tattoo is for life and not just for Christmas? Yes. Excuse me. Yes. So you weren't that sure, you just heard there's a party up the road, there are free tattoos. Rather like people giving out free drinks. And you thought, oh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> what was the purpose of the party? Was it a tattoo party? No. Oh, that was just sort of an extra? Yeah. Like perhaps going to a children's party and somebody offering face painting? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes, no, maybe. Max, during the course of this party, you got your tattoo gun out. Yeah, well, it was already left out from earlier on that morning when I was doing some work on the other stuff. And how much had you had to drink? Quite a lot. I'd been drinking all day. Do you need to be licensed to be a tattoo artist? Yes. Who knew that? To put a tattoo on somebody's skin? Yes. Were you licensed, Max? No. Coming next. I want to be absolutely clear, I'm absolutely shocked by this. Leaving aside what you wanted on your bottom, which I make no judgement about whatsoever, it wasn't just dumb. It wasn't just super dumb. It wasn't even stupid. You could have ended up dead.
Becky is in court to claim £1,500 for the removal of a tattoo which she had done at a house party when both she and the tattooist were under the influence of alcohol. Defendant Max admits he began the tattoo but says he doesn't owe the full amount as he stopped and it was completed by someone else. You've been drinking all day. The tattoo gun was out. Did you tattoo somebody before Becky arrived? Emma, I'd done myself and a friend. You've done yourself? Yeah. And and what did you put on? Where, where, where was it? Yeah, I put a star on my foot. Were you taking payment for tattooing your no. friend? It was free? Yes. Like a sort of bonus drink? Yeah, though, if you put it in that context. It's a light-hearted yeah. thing. I mean, why wouldn't you be light-hearted about potentially giving somebody a lethal and life-threatening disease? Becky, you were drunk as well, and you'd been drinking before you arrived. Yeah. You'd had quite a lot to drink when you got to the party. You say the overriding reason that you went there was because there were free tattoos. No, to see my friends as well. Of um, course, to see your friends as well. But there were uh, tattoos on offer. Yeah. I went... I went to see Max and stuff, and I said, I, like, I asked if I wanted a tattoo and stuff, and I said, well, yeah, I'll have one on my bum. Just pause for a second. I may have had a slight moment. <laughs> Take this slowly. You said to Max, I'd like a tattoo. I've been thinking about it over a significant period of time, and I think the most artistic and thoughtful place I could put it was where on your... My bum, because I knew it wasn't professional and I wanted to practice on my bum. I knew it was what? Wasn't professional. It wasn't professional. And so you thought you'd want to put it somewhere where the sun didn't shine? <laughs> <laughs> if you put it that way, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've seen this tattoo and I think it's rather good that there wasn't an L on one cheek and an L on the other. And you could have had LOL. Do you understand? <laughs> And so the tattoo gun was handed over to... I think, did you do the tattoo or did you hand the gun over to the friend? I did a small portion and started to realise that this was a daft idea and it would be a good idea to stop. So you started and then somebody else took over. What did you ask for to be placed on your posterior, Becky? <laughs> what did you ask? Do you remember even? It happens. <laughs> Excuse me? Have you got a copy of... Yes. Just to be clear, you asked for that to be yes. placed on your bottom. Uh-huh. Could I see a picture, please? <laughs> Are you ready for this? I thought it was going to be Please, fun. I need a moment. Do you mind? Yes. The first word is blurred. Can I just have a close-up of the, the tattoo itself, please? Oh, my God. I want to be absolutely clear. I'm absolutely shocked by this. This is permanent. I'm horrified by what I've seen. I'm not happy with it. You're not happy with it? No. Why would it be? It was only meant to be small. I think that's the least of the problems that you've got with this. Did you know that yeah. that phrase, I call it a phrase, an exclamation, did you know that it was going to be permanent? Yeah, yes. but I wasn't wanting it that big. It wasn't meant to be that big. I, it's actually ruined my life. I can't go and wear bikinis, I can't wear shorts, I can't have a spray tan, I can't take my niece swimming. Did you know that the person who tattooed you was drunk. Did you know that Max had been drinking all day? Yeah, I did, but I trusted him as a friend. Now, you've got this charming phrase. Yes? How long have you had it? Since June. June. Have you found out how much it would cost to be removed? 1,500. Now, I think, having seen this case and being very concerned about it, there's a court-appointed expert witness I'd like to ask some questions of. She's been permanently scarred. Yeah. 
I feel what do you th what do you think when you look at this? I feel horrible. It shouldn't have happened that night. But this was your friend over some years. What has this done to your friendship? I fed it in many ways, but I don't talk anymore. I don't really see each other. I'm not surprised. Madam, now just tell me who you are, if you don't mind. Um, I'm Ray Patricia. I own a laser company that does tattoo removal. And how long have you done that for? Three years and studied for a year. And you had to study for a year. Because am I right, when you interfere, when you do anything with somebody's skin, you have to be very careful. Yes? Exactly. It's the largest organ in the body, isn't it? Yep. Now, you've seen this tattoo here. Yes. And I'm going to ask you, independently, how much it would cost to remove, firstly, and secondly, whether or not it's capable of being removed entirely. I think that the saving grace this young lady has is that the ink hasn't been pushed in through the dome laser skin too deep. Right, so that's the relevant layer of the skin. That's right. That's which is right. about, I think, the third layer of the skin, isn't yeah. it? Between, underneath the dermis level. Yeah. I so see. I believe that I could remove all that. It would all come out. However, we do have to point out that although that we wouldn't expect any scarring, that it can actually pull at the natural pigmentation. So you could see very briefly where the tattoo had been. But you wouldn't see the language and there's a chance over time that the scarring would reduce? Definitely. Down to almost nothing? Um, possibly, yes. Do you think somebody who's unlicensed should even be able to purchase no. a tattoo gun? My own husband is a doctor and he uses needles and he went to medical school for years to do it. And the consequences from infection being passed yes. can be absolutely horrific. And forever. forever. How much will it cost to put this right? I actually gave a bill to this young lady already for £900. £900. Thank you so much for coming today. You've been You're extremely welcome. informative and helpful and I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Were you listening to that? Yes. Listening? Thank you. Becky, is there anything you'd like to say before I rule? Um, just that it's actually ruined my life and I feel really depressed over it. I just... Yeah. Max? I'm just sorry it ever happened. The night shouldn't have went down like that. Well, let me ask you before I rule, because I want to give you an opportunity. Why do you say that you aren't responsible to pay for repairing the damage you've done to Becky's bottom? Well, I only done a small portion. It was a mutual friend that done the real damage, I would say. So I should really be bringing him here and portioning the relevant blame to him? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Before I come to my final view, just out of interest for me, I, bearing in mind I'm sitting on a swivel chair and would be terribly upset if I fell off it. Are you still tattooing? No. I got rid of all the equipment after that night. You got rid of it? Yes. Very sensible. That's the first and the last time I'm going to use that in respect of you. Becky, is a friendship between the two of you ruined forever? I'm not happy. And why not? Because he should have taken responsibility, presumably. Yeah, he should have said no. Becky, Max, this is one of the genuinely most horrifying cases that I've considered. And the reason it's horrifying is not because of the value of the claim, but because of what could have happened here. Max, you took a potentially lethal weapon to a party. It was a lethal weapon because you knew full well that when you tattoo somebody, you have to do it under extremely safe circumstances. Otherwise, in the long term, you could pass a communicable disease and kill somebody. You took that to the party under the influence of alcohol and you allowed and permitted another person who was even less trained in inverted commas than you to pick up that gun and to tattoo somebody else's skin. In those circumstances, I find you entirely liable for what took place. What's worse, what exacerbates the horror of the entire thing is that you've been drinking all day. Becky, you also had been drinking. This was one of the worst decisions you've ever made, to put it mildly. And I have to say, 
it's deeply shocking to me that you thought it was a reasonable thing to do, to go to a party where they were ostensibly giving out tattoos, and you were prepared, having been drunk, to go and submit yourself to a free tattoo by this moron over here leaving aside what you wanted on your bottom, which I make no judgment about whatsoever. It wasn't just dumb. It wasn't just super dumb. It wasn't even stupid. You could have ended up dead. In the circumstances, I find Max liable. And so therefore, you're entitled to get the money back to put the situation right. And I've been very helped by an expert today who tells me that's going to cost £900. Now, Ordinarily, you'd be entitled to some money for the scarring for the distress. But I find you contributed to the distress that you're now in. And it seems to me in the circumstances, bearing in mind what I've heard from the expert, that this can be put right and you're entitled to £900. And that's the order of this court. Max, I'm happy that you've got rid of this equipment. You're a very, very lucky young man. This could have been an infinitely more serious case. Think carefully. Becky was awarded £900 of her claim. Let's find out how she felt about the judge's ruling. Well, when I went in there, I felt like scared and angry and stuff. I still do feel angry, but I'm glad that I've actually got the money and now that I can get off, it's a big relief. The apology was due. I've already apologised for the tattoo many times already. As I've already said, I was asked my portion it. It was a mutual friend that finished it but I'll still, still take responsibility for it due to the fact that it was in my house. It was with my equipment. And how much had you had to drink? Quite a lot. I'd been drinking all day. I oh, know I shouldn't have got it in the first place. No, it's, it's ruined your life almost, but basically, career in that. And there's only so many times you can say sorry, but I will keep saying it to you. Did you know that it was going to be permanent? Yeah. Yes. But I wasn't wanting it that big. It wasn't meant to be that big. I, it's actually ruined my life. Totally made me depressed and I can never wear shorts or get spray tans and like I want to be, can go far in life and I want to actually be a model, hopefully. I'd say everyone's got their own part to play. But if you ask for the tattoo, I started the tattoo and this is how it's sort of played out now. I don't intend on getting any more tattoos by my friends, but I would probably get them professionally done and something that's actually going to mean something to me. Coming next. I have to tell you, Dave, we're at the birth of a first. <laughs> <laughs> if I could put my head in my hands and shake them and it wouldn't interfere with my position as a judge, I would. In fact, wait a moment, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs>